something for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. God bless you, Daniel. Come on, Gerald. Praise God. Who else, who else out there? Who else is with us? Come on in, family. Let's get together and have a wonderful time in the Lord. I'm telling you, <clears throat> Let's, let's start something new. Keanu, what's up, girl? Jimmy, let's start something new. Start tagging someone who you love. Tag someone you love. And tag someone even if you don't love them. Because someone needs to hear this message. So let's start something new, guys. Go ahead and tag someone. Go ahead and tag someone now. Put their name. But when you tag that person, you got to do the at symbol first and then their name. Okay? If you don't do the at symbol first, that you did not tag that person. So if you're viewing this and you want someone to hear this, you got to at that person. You got to do the at first, okay? So again, do the at first and then tag that individual. Come on, at that person. I'm telling you, we going to another level right now. I'm so puffed up, man. I don't know if you guys can. There you go. You got to at the person's name. You got, you just, listen, you got to at the person's name. If you don't at the name, then it, if it's not highlighted, then that person is not uh, getting the message. You got, hey, Christina, but I don't know. So you can put the person's name in there, but if it's not if it's not highlighted, the person's name is not at. You're not gonna, you know, get the person to uh, tune in. So you got to at the person's name. Okay, you have to at the person's name. I got something good for you. I got straight fire for you today. Praise God. So y'all get in position. Get in position. Get in position to hear. Hear from Holy Spirit. Let's worship God real quick. Let's let's worship God. Hallelujah, God. You have won the victory. Isn't that wonderful? That death could not hold him down. Yeah. Come on. Come on in. It's wonderful that he has the victory. And the reason why that's wonderful is that if Jesus has the victory, then so do you. Everyone here, at someone. At someone right now. There you go. Remember, the at symbol and their name. Come on. Make sure their name is highlighted. Get someone on this. Get someone on this. What I got for you right now is going to be revelational. I got deliverance for you right now. And I want to, I'm going to make an announcement, too, about the ministry because God, God, God has, uh, let's say he has elevated the ministry. Okay. There's an elevation in this ministry. Okay. There's an elevation in this ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. How y'all doing out there? You guys are good? How your week going so far? Praise God. I want to tell you, I'm still feasting big time off of Sunday's message. I am as high as high can be. I'm high in the word of God. I'm telling you, I'm still feasting off that message on Sunday. Praise God. Candace, come on. Praise God. What's up? Pat say Turner. Praise God. God bless every single one of you guys. Make sure that when you act the person, their name should be highlighted. That's how you know that they're tagged. If their name is not highlighted, that individual is not tagged. So when you act the person, their name should be highlighted. Praise God. I'm ready to roll. Y'all ready? I'm going to give you guys a few more minutes to come on in. Well, I can, I'm going to pray, and then I have a few announcements, and then I'm going to just let this thing do what it does. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for your presence. You're here by your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you that your angels are here. Praise God. We thank you that death did not hold you down. You are the risen king, seated in majesty. You are the risen king. We bless your holy name, Father. We thank you for Jesus, who is Savior and Lord. 
We thank you for Holy Spirit, who is the counselor, the governor, the teacher, the great architect he is. We thank you for your angels who are ministering spirits. We thank you for the cloud of witnesses who are, who are just tuning in. We thank you that you are having a seat as we study you, research you, as you reveal yourself to us. None of me and all of you, I decrease that you may increase Abba. Abba, Abba, speak in and through me for the glory of Jesus, the one who paid the price that grants us the opportunity to call you Abba. We are in relationship with you because our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, paid the price. We bless your holy name, Yeshua, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. I want to make a few announcements, praise God, bless be the name of Jesus. Our Savior. How are you guys doing out there? You guys good? We should we should have this thing flooded, right? Because if you tuned in on uh if you were a part of Sunday's message or if you heard Sunday's message, what we're getting now is next level. And I want to tell you that we are now a ministry that has really uh gotten the the mandate, the instructions from the Lord. We're going to go uh, deep into um, deliverance. Okay? We're not just going to come and meet and give messages and not, we're not doing that. The focus moving forward is deliverance. We're going to focus on deliverance. That's the focus. That's the focus. That's the focus. Because Jesus came to set his people free. And so if we're not if we're not experiencing deliverance, then we're not experiencing what Jesus paid the price for. So I'm going to now move into a high dimension of deliverance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to educate about the spirit realm. There is a realm that we don't operate in that we ought to because Everything that happens in the natural first happens in the spiritual. And so if you don't have the education of the spirit realm, what you're going to do is you're going to live a defeated life because you're going to approach everything from a natural standpoint. And there's nothing natural about this life. This is a spiritual life. So I'm going to make a few announcements and then I'll get, my, uh, get on with this teaching. Number one. This Sunday, we're having our luncheon from 2 to 4. Don't forget that. From 2 to 4 this Sunday, we're going to meet at the Manchester Flash. You guys have the information. Emails, will, I mean, the text message will be going out. So this Sunday from 2 to 4, everyone who serves in any capacity in the ministry, I got to see you in the place. We're going to feed you. We're going to fellowship with you. We're going to celebrate you. But I want you to hear your, my heart. So that you know where we're going because you are a big part. If you serve in this ministry, you are a critical, vital part of our next. See, we, we are moving into our next. God is doing some things. He's doing some things. And I'm telling you that you're going to start to see a move of God like never before. So we need you in the place because you are part of our next. Praise God. Second announcement. The following Sunday, not this Sunday, the following Sunday... We are doing our Ministers of Helps ceremony. And the dress code is a white top, black bottom. Invite your family and friends. That day, you will receive your certificate of, 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 uh, to be a minister. We're going we're gonna, to um, uh, acknowledge you as a minister of helps. Praise God. So we're going to celebrate you on that day as well. My next message, I mean uh, announcement is, there is a mandatory uh, meeting on the 16th at 7 p.m. for the evangelism team. You're going to get that link if you are part of that. And if you want to be a part of the, the team, uh, get with Keon because we, we, we need people to go out there and save the souls. And I'm so glad that we're dealing with deliverance because we're going to need deliverance to bring people into the kingdom. So if you, if you are evangelizing, you're going to have to know about deliverance because you're going to walk up on some people who got some things going on, right? Let me say something. Sunday after church, after we fed the homeless, 
we encountered a man, and and he had he had um he had a he had some demons in him, and I prayed over him, and he fell under the spirit of God, and he was shaking on the floor, and we cast that de them demons out of him. Praise God! So I'm telling you that this is not by accident. The man walked up, and I prayed, laid hands on him, he fell to the floor, his eyes started to move, he started to shaking. And people were there who saw it. You know, Sharia saw it. Um, my, 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 my kids saw it and, and his friends and my wife saw it. The man got delivered right there on the floor. I mean, right there on the floor on the side of the salon. We pray for that man. We cast out that demon. And he started to shake it and stuff like that. So I'm telling you that God is moving us. Or not, not moving. God has moved us into the realm of deliverance. Praise God. We're going to start casting out demons. Praise God. Our last announcement is... Our first couples event is happening. It says, okay, it, I'm back live because it, it went down for a second. Okay, praise God. Our next, our, our first um, couples event is happening December the 9th. It's happening at, uh, we're going to um, Tyson's Corner. We're going to eat. We're going to shop. Uh, we, we have a place we're going to go to to make some nice things for Christmas for our mates. You got to come. The, uh, the, the the price per couple is fifty dollars. You can cash app it or go to the um, text to give 804-348-8300. Okay, and this is for marriage, the marriage ministry. All right, so if only for marriage people. This is for the marriage ministry. Let me clear that up. It's for marriage ministries. Okay, and so when you pay your fifty dollars, just put couple, just put marriage. I'm put the uh, put the word marriage in the uh, you know when you make that payment. So we know that you're paying that for that reason. And then, uh, but pay pay soon because um, seats are limited, okay? And the deadline is December the 6th. So by December the 6th, we're going to just close down the registration. Amen. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Hallelujah. Today's message is, the title of today's message is, it's never a person. The title of today's message is it's never a person it's never a person i want to show you something very interesting we we learned we learned this on sunday past that anything that happens is never a person okay it's always a spirit okay so when you deal with something if you don't deal with that thing from the spirit you're going to miss it. And so you look at people when they're being a certain way, acting a certain way, doing certain things, and you're frustrated because you're saying he is doing this or she is doing this. But that's not the truth. Everything that we do, we are influenced by a spirit. Okay? No one does anything on their own. I want to be clear on that. Anything you do, you're not doing it on your own. Anything you do, you are influenced by a spirit. You don't have it, you don't have it, the, the, the capability to do something independent from a spirit. You don't. Because God did not create man to lord over himself. Every person alive has an overlord. Okay, if you are alive, you have an overlord. You, there is an overlord over you, over me. And that overlord is a spiritual being. That's the reason why slavery has never worked and slavery will never work because it was never designed for a man to have lordship over another man. Somebody needs to say wisdom right now. Somebody should shout right now because I'm giving you revelation. Slavery in any capacity would never work. Controlling a person in any capacity would never work because God did, God did not design a human to rule over another human. The, the thing that rules over man is a spirit, okay? Initially, yeah, please share this because I'm telling you, you, you guys need to share this. Hold up. Do me a solid favor. Everybody here, press share right now. Press the share button. Thank you, Sharia, for that too. If you did not press the share button, I'm going to stop right now and give you an opportunity because this is going to get really, really good. 
So I'm asking everyone here, do me a favor. Press the share button right now. Everyone here, do not <clears throat> listen to this message and not press the share button. I want everybody here to help me to evangelize and press the share button right now, please. And I appreciate you doing that, all right? Now listen, <clears throat> you were not designed to rule over yourself and you were not designed to rule over another human. And listen, all, everybody who's pressing share, which is everybody here, make sure that your, uh, your status is public so that everyone can see this. If it's not public, it's not going out to the masses, okay? So you got to change your status, you know, to public so that this message can reach more people, amen? So do me that favor, change your status to public. Change your status to public so that this message can reach more people, okay? Now listen to this. You were not designed to govern yourself, nor were you designed to govern another person. That's the reason why when you are in a relationship or when you are in partnership and you feel someone trying to control you, you get irritable you, because you were never designed to govern you. You were never designed to govern her, govern him. You were designed to govern, you were designed to have someone govern over you. Okay? You got to, you got to, you got to get this. You cannot govern yourself and you cannot govern someone else. If you're being governed, you're being governed by a spiritual force. And I'm going to prove this to you. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. Okay? Let's go to Matthew <clears throat> Chapter 16, verses 13 to 17. And I'm going to read this to you out of the King, uh, the New King James Version. Okay, again, this is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 17 in the New King James Version. And it reads, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Okay. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus Answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood, listen to this, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You got it? A person did not reveal to Peter that Jesus is the Christ. That revelation came from a spirit. Lord, have mercy. God, the spirit, told Peter that this is the Christ. Somebody needs to give me wisdom on this thing. Now, come on now. I'm, I'm going to let, I want you guys engaged. I want you engaged now. Now, come on now. Peter did not come up with this revelation on his own. It was the spirit of God. That gave Peter the revelation of the Christ. A human did not give Maurice, Maurice, Candace, and Haji Jeremy. A human did not give did not give Peter, Tanya, the revelation of the identity of Christ. It came from a spirit. Jimmy, it did not come from flesh. He says, flesh and blood, humans. Could not tell you. If you ever get a revelation of Christ, it did not come from a man. When you get, when I teach you, and you get a revelation of Christ through the teaching that I give you, it's not me. It is, it, it is, it is God the Father revealing to you the Christ. So even though I'm teaching you, it's God teaching you through me. You will never learn Jesus. Let me give you insight. You would never learn about Jesus from a man or a woman. Any person who, I don't care how gifted they are. I don't care how anointed they are. I don't care how blessed they are. 
Whenever you get a revelation of Christ, it's God the Father revealing him to you. A man cannot tell you he revealed Christ to you. Only the Father can reveal the Son. Lord, have mercy. When you get a revelation of the Son, it came through the Father. Even though I'm teaching you, it's not me. See, that's the reason why when you're in church, you got to be focused and listening to what I'm saying to you because it's not me. It's the Father in me revealing to you what you're getting. That's the reason why I don't mind telling you I don't take credit for nothing. I can't. Anything I give you, anything you get from me, is coming through me by the Father. So Peter got the revelation of the Christ in Matthew 16, verses 13 and 17. There was a revelation of Christ, and that came from who? The Father. All right? Now, the same, the same scripture, the same scripture, the same scripture, four verses later, let me show you another revelation. The same scripture, the same scripture, Matthew 16, verses 21 to 24, New King James Version. Watch this. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. And suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, this shall not happen to you. Verse 23. But he turned to Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> in, one, in, one, in one conversation... God reveals to Peter that this is the Christ. In another conversation, Satan enters in and tries to stop what was revealed in a prior conversation. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, have mercy. God revealed the Christ, and Satan tried to stop the revelation of the Christ by influencing Peter to try to stop Jesus from doing the work needed to bring you and I into relationship. It was never, it, Lord have mercy, it was God who revealed the Christ and it was Satan who tried to stop the revelation of Christ because what makes him the Christ is Calvary. Calvary makes him the anointed one because through that anointing, he was going to destroy the altars of Satan. He was going to destroy the stronghold of the spirit realm. So Satan was the spirit influencing the same man who got the revelation of the Christ. It's never a person. Anything that you're influenced by, let me say this to you. Anything that you're influenced by, check the spirit. Check the spirit of your influence. Check the spirit of your influence. You have to listen to me. <clears throat> you, we've been told that that somehow, some way, you can influence yourself, or, or or you can rule over yourself, or you can. You there's three voices. There is not a th there's, there's not three voices. There's two voices. There is your voice. I mean, there is, there is God's voice or Satan's voice. You don't have a voice. You don't have a voice. You don't have a voice. It is either God's voice or Satan's voice. You don't have a voice. Let me show you the revelation. Peter 
was the one who spoke and said, I'm going to rebuke you. You can't go to the cross. But who did Jesus address in verse 23? He did not mention Peter. He says, but he turned and said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, let me help you. <clears throat> Jesus was not calling, Jesus was not calling Peter Satan. Jesus was, was, was acknowledging, Jesus was confronting the spirit that was influencing Peter. He did not call Peter Satan. He was talking to the spirit. Listen, listen. Jesus would not call, he would not call you a devil because you're not a devil. Jesus won't call you a devil because, listen to this, listen to this, because you're made in the image and likeness of his dad. So he's not going to call you that. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you have done or will do, he would never call you a devil because you're made in the image and likeness of God. You follow me? So when he said, get thee behind me, Satan, he wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the spirit behind Peter that was influencing Peter from doing something that he should not do. So Peter did not have his own influence. In one verse, Peter was influenced by God to reveal this is the Christ. In the other verse, Peter was influenced by Satan to stop the revelation of the Christ. The only way that you can operate under this level of revelation is this. You must be in the spirit. If you're not in the spirit, you'll miss it. If you're not in the spirit, you're going to think that you're doing it. If you're not in the spirit, you know what? Let me, let me say something. <clears throat> to Peter's defense, to Peter's defense, Peter actually thought <clears throat> he was doing something good. To Peter's defense, he thought he was doing the right thing. How many of you out there got a word from God? God gave you a word. God gave you a promise. God gave you a word. And the next thing you got was another word, but you never checked it, the source of that word. And what that word did was when you received it, it took you out of the blessing. See, <clears throat> you should never get a word let me, let me, let me, thank you, Holy Spirit. He's talking to me. He's talking, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. Let me, let me say something. He's talking to me. Whenever God gives you a word, because Satan is crafty. Satan <clears throat> gave Jesus a word. Let me say something. Satan is extremely crafty. Okay. Satan is extremely crafty. Now, listen to me. Satan gave Jesus a word. Satan gave Jesus Psalm 91. Okay? In Matthew chapter 4, Satan gave Jesus Psalm 91. But what he did was he left out some of the word. So if you're not in the spirit, Satan can give you a word. That sounds like it came from the book. But if you're not in the spirit, you're going to miss it. And you will take that advice and be, and, and, and be influenced by Satan and you will miss God. You follow me? I'm talking to you about spiritual warfare. Okay? You got to be in tune with this right here because we know <clears throat> that Satan knows the word. How do we know that? Because he quoted scripture to Jesus. Listen to me. Satan knows the word. And unfortunately, he knows the word better than believers. Unfortunately. And Satan can give you a word. <clears throat> and if you don't know scripture, you would take that word and run with it. But see, what Satan did was he was quoting the word to the word. So Jesus knew the word. So he did not go for what, what Satan was presenting 
Because Jesus was in the word, because he is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. So even though Satan knew the word and manipulated scripture, Jesus was on top of it because he is the word that became flesh. So the only way for you not to be falling to what Peter fell to is that you got to get into the word. You follow me? Because if you're not in the word, you're not in the spirit. And if you're not in the spirit, you're being you're being influenced by 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 this this uh this uh, uh sense based world. What you see, what you what you hear, what you smell, what you touch, what you taste, your senses. You follow me? And so, when you are in your senses, that's when you uh, erect or rebuild altars that Jesus broke. Okay, I'm talking to you about altars. There are altars that are being constructed in, in lives of the believers every single day. Every single day, believers are reconstructing, rebuilding the, the, the altar that Jesus destroyed, okay? But the, the only way to defeat this is that you must be, come on now, in the spirit, okay? If you're not in the spirit, you won't discern. Now, this is, this is some good revelation here. If you're not in the spirit, you will not be able to discern between the revelation of the father or the trickery of Satan. Let me say that again. Let me say it again. If you're not in the spirit, you will not be able to discern between the revelation of the father or the trickery of Satan. And, and Satan is so crafty that it appears that he's doing something good. It appears that that's a good advice. Oh my God. I, I'm, getting, I'm getting revelation. Let me go to Proverbs. Let me go to Proverbs. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go to Proverbs, and I'm going to Proverbs chapter, uh, I believe it's 14. It, I, I believe it's 14, chapter uh, ch chapter 14, verse 12. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 says, there's a way, listen to this. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 says, there is a way, listen to now, there is a way that seems right But in the end, it leads to death. Follow me now. There is a way. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way. Now listen to this word. There's not many ways. Satan is crafty. Pay attention. Satan is not going to give you many ways. Satan is going to give you a way. Lord have mercy. Satan is going to give you a way. He's not going to give you many ways. Satan is going to give you a way. One way. There is a way that seems right. But in the end, it leads to death. So that means that you can get a revelation word from God. You can get a download from the Holy Spirit. You can get insight on what to do. And right after that, based on scripture, you're going to get another word that seems like it came from God. It seems to line up with the prior word. It seems to make sense. It feels good. It seems like this is the way to go. But if you don't know the word, it's going to seem right. But it's going to lead to destruction. Somebody say wisdom. Somebody say revelation. <clears throat> so you got to be careful on what you hear. Because what you hear may sound right. And it may feel right. But if you don't test the spirit. Dana. Helen. Tanya. If you don't need 
if you don't test Tanya, if you don't test the spirit, you're going to be in trouble, Haji, because it seems right. But that's a way of destruction, Jimmy, that Satan is using, Janet, to put people in bondage, Onika, and not have people flow as they ought to. I'm telling you. So that's why I say that you got to be in the spirit, Janet. If you're not in the spirit, guarantee you're not hearing from God. I, I guarantee it. Listen to me, Sharia. I guarantee this. This is a guarantee that if you're not in the spirit, you are not hearing from God. And what happens is when you're not in the spirit and you hear from God, what you have done is you have reconstructed an altar that Jesus demolished at Calvary. If you are not in the spirit, you are not hearing from God. I'm going to tell you why. Because God only speaks to the spirit. He don't speak to nothing else. Whenever God speaks, he speaks spirit to spirit. He don't speak. God does not speak spirit to flesh, spirit to, to, to soul, spirit to logic, spirit to sense. God only speaks to the spirit because God is a spirit. And those who worship him, those who listen to him, those who are in relationship with with him must do it in spirit and in truth. So here's the revelation. If you're not in the spirit, you're not in the truth. If you're not in the spirit, you're not in the truth. If you're not in the spirit, you're not in the truth. <clears throat> John 4, 24. If you're not in the spirit, you're not in the truth. And, 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 and now look at this. If you're not in the truth, then you're in bondage because John 8.32 says, and you should know the truth and the truth that you know and accept makes you free. So if you're not in the spirit, you're not in the truth. If you're not in the truth, then you're in bondage because you should know the truth. Listen to this. He did not say believe the truth. Come on now. Listen to the words now. He did not say, he did not say believe the truth. He says, and you should know the truth, and the truth will do what? Make you free. See, see, believing the truth will make you free. You can but Lord have mercy. Boy, I'm gonna tell you something. You you can believe the truth. And still be in bondage. He never asked you to believe the truth. He says know it. That's why I always say. As a believer. You have to grow to the place of. <coughs> you are no longer believing. Now you know. You got to listen. If you are still a believer. Who believes. Then you will be in the world of trouble. Because believing the truth does not make you free. Knowing it does. You have to know the truth. But you can only know the truth if you're in the spirit. If you're not in the spirit, now what Satan has done is he took you from knowing and he put you now into believing. See, Satan is crafty. Okay? I'm talking to you about deliverance. This is warfare. Okay? Okay? I'm, 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 I'm telling you, God, God, God is, Keon, God is giving me, God is giving me such insight on this spiritual warfare thing. And what he's doing is he has me really focusing on a different level of teaching so that people who listen to these messages, Dana, are set free in their soul because people are bound, not in their bodies. Not in their spirit. Anyone who's bound is bound in their soul. You follow me, Janet? And so the Lord is giving me revelation. And through this revelation, I'm able to share Candace at another dimension pertaining to warfare, Helen. Okay? And so what I'm dealing with now is I'm dealing with uh, uh, changing the mind. Okay? And this level of insight is doing just that. You follow me, Nene? And so we are a special, we are a, a ministry 
that specializes in true deliverance according to Jesus. Praise God. So we got to stay in the spirit, Christine. Okay. If we don't stay in the spirit, then we transition to the flesh. Now, God is not the God of the flesh. He's the God of the spirit. Okay. And as long as you are in the spirit, altars that have been demolished cannot be erected. It cannot be. As long as you are in the spirit, Satan cannot, Satan cannot reconstruct an altar. You got to listen to me. As long as you are in the spirit, you actually are demolishing altars. Okay? Now, let me give you the revelation of altars. Demons construct altars. And the re Lord have mercy. Should I, should I even go? This, 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 this may be too much. Let, this, this may be too much. Let, let me, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause on that because this, this, is, this is a whole different teaching. <clears throat> I, I, I do that on Sunday because I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to go somewhere. Let me, let me, no, no, no. Let me just, let me just, let me not do this because I'm about to go. This, this, this. Lord have mercy. Man. As long as you're in the spirit, you are, you are demolishing altars. But if you ever get into your flesh, you are reconstructing what, what Jesus demolished when he went to hell. When Jesus died, he had to go down, like I shared on Sunday, in the spirit to set us free because we were bound in the spirit. And so only the spirit can free the spirit. A flesh cannot free the spirit. A flesh. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how fast you are. I don't care. How, I, you cannot deliver someone in your flesh. Delivery only comes through the spirit. You follow me? So the only way you're going to live according to what God has for you is you must stay in the spirit. Now, Satan's job is to get you out of the spirit and get you into the flesh. Now, if he ever gets you out of the spirit and gets you into the flesh, the reason why you lose is this right here. The flesh don't know the truth. The flesh... Don't know the truth. The flesh don't know the truth. The flesh, the flesh was not created to know the truth. The spirit was. So in your flesh, you're bound. But in your spirit, Jesus says, let the weak say, I am strong. In your spirit, Jesus says, who the son says free is free indeed. In your spirit, Jesus says, that my God will supply all of my needs. You see, as long as you're in the spirit, you have jurisdiction to the spirit realm according to the kingdom. The kingdom is a spiritual force. You can't get nothing from the kingdom being natural. So people are struggling for their breakthrough. They're struggling for an answer, struggling for a word. But I'm telling you, the reason why I can flow this way is because I am not in my flesh. The reason why I can do this off the cuff is I'm getting downloads right now as I talk to you. As I talk to you, I can hear Jesus tell no ball call Sunday ball call. Hey! Mm, 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 mm. Woo! Hey! Woo! Hold up. Wait a second, man. Man. See, flesh and blood is not revealing this to me. I'm getting a teaching. Listen, I'm teaching you as I'm being taught. I'm being taught right now. I'm being taught so much that I can go all night. We can do this thing. We can do this thing to the wee hours of the morning. I'm being taught right now. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Wait till Sunday. I got too much to give you. If I, if, if I gave you too much more, you won't go to sleep tonight. You won't go to sleep. It'll be too much. Praise God. 
I'm being taught right now. Who's teaching me? Jesus is giving Holy Spirit. God is giving Jesus instructions. Jesus is taking that instruction and giving it to the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is giving that instructions to the angel of wisdom. And the angel of wisdom is here speaking in my ear, telling me what to say. The Father is speaking to the Son. The Son is speaking to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking to the angel. And the angel is talking to me. He's, he's in my ear. I hear him. I'm getting downloads right now. I got too much downloads. I can't even contain myself. Praise. But it's in my spirit. But I can't flow like this. If I was in the flesh. Revelation comes by the Spirit. And now what, what the Holy Spirit is doing is he's giving the angel of wisdom insight to give to me for the sole purpose, listen to this now, of demolishing altars. Now listen to this. When I speak this word to you and you receive it, that angel that's assigned to you goes to altars that you have constructed. Your mother, your father, your, 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 your grandparents, your great, great grandparents, those altars that they constructed, when you receive this word, the angel now has rights to go into the realm of the spirit and demolition. <laughs> those altars, man. <laughs> Every believer. If you are a believer, every believer must, capital M, capital U, capital S, capital T, every believer must be skilled in spiritual warfare. Listen, listen, if you are a believer, every single believer. Tanya, listen to me on this one. Mother Randolph, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Gerald, listen. Every believer, if you are a believer, you must be skilled, Christina, in spiritual warfare because whether you know it or not, you are at war. See, what we miss is that we think that when you say yes to Jesus, it's it, 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 that's it. That, 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 that's when all hell broke loose in your life. You done left the enemy camp and you think he not going to bring warfare? See, that's why you got to be in the spirit and get into this book. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't believe that you need to be skilled in spiritual warfare, the devil is going to do to you what he did to the seven sons of Sceva when he beat them boys and he and he and he took them clo their clothes off. Let me say something to you. I'm 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 almost done. Let me let me let me let me let me close out. Let me close out right here. <clears throat> the spirit realm is about authority. Okay. The spirit realm is about ranks. God has not gifted anyone <clears throat> more than anyone else. Let me say it this way. I am not gifted more than you. God did not give me a special gift and not you. We are all gifted and everything we have is to be, is to be used to perfect the saints. Okay? So I have this, but don't, don't diminish what you have. Okay, you have something that I don't have, and in reality, my my my, my spiritual father, Mav Monroe said, "I want my stuff." He says, "You got my stuff." He says, "Get get your stuff and give it to me, and don't die with my stuff." So you you got something that the body of Christ needs. You got it. If you are a believer. You got something 
that the entire body of Christ needs. So don't just look at me and say, I'm anointed and blah, 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 blah. Glory to God. Praise God. You do too. You got it? Now, this is the difference. When someone makes a committed dedication to the things of God. Now, I want you to hear me on this now. When someone makes a committed dedication to the things of God, now you begin to stand out from the crowd. And what happens is you become higher ranked. Oh, my Jesus Christ, have mercy. You become higher ranked in the realm of the spirit. What makes the ranking higher is not Jesus. It's the person who stays in the spirit because if you stay in the spirit, you're going to grow stronger, wiser, and bigger in the spirit. So the reason why I'm flowing higher than before and I'm on another level is not that God has given me something that you don't have. You don't have this. That's okay. What you do have, I don't have. And if you give me what I have and I give you what you have, now we're killing the work of the enemy. Don't look at someone and say, they're gifted. Praise God, they're gifted, but you are too. But you got to go into the spirit. Go deep to bring this thing out. So if you, if you, if you stay in the spirit, what you don't realize is you got higher ranking. Now, Satan knows rank. He knows rank. Like in the military, you have the you have the private and you have the, the private first class and you you have the sergeant and you, you have the sergeant first class and you have the, the master sergeant and you have the lieutenants and you have the corporals and you, you have that. See, see, once you once you are Lobo Cosa, Yeba O when you are in the realm of the spirit, you get higher rankings when you stay in the spirit. When you stay in the spirit, Jesus, come on. Acts chapter 19, I believe it is. The demon said, I know, I know Jesus. I know Paul. Who are you? That's, that's authoritative conversation. In other words, they can cast me out, but you can't because you're not in the spirit. You're doing this by flesh. So I recognize that. So now I have the authority to beat you out of your clothes. Demons know who has authority based on the time they spend in the spirit. We should all lay, we should all lay hands on the sick and they recover. I'm done after this. I'll, I'll prove it to you. I, 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 let me prove it to you. We should all... I, let me... The more closely, boy, I tell you, this is this, this, this right here. We should all be able to function like this. Where are we at? Mark chapter 16, verse 15. I'm going to start here. And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel.
to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. These signs will accompany those who believe. These signs will accompany those. These signs, these signs, these signs, these signs will accompany those. These signs will accompany those. In my name, the first thing you know, the first thing, the first way you know you're anointed of God, cast out devils. In my name, they should cast out devils. They should speak with new tongues. They should take up a serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When you do that, that's when you know the kingdom has manifested in your life. He didn't say the prophet. The, he, he didn't say. He didn't say the teacher. He didn't say the pastor. He didn't say the evangelist. He didn't say the prophet. He didn't say the apostle. He says these signs shall follow those who believe. If you believe, then you should be able to do what I just read. And now when that happens, when that happens, you are in a higher realm, rank in the spirit. You follow me? Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to keep on um, bringing true deliverance. True deliverance. Who's that? Who, who's that blood pressure? Who's that with the blood pressure? Who's that right there? Who, who's, who, who, who mentioned that blood pressure? Who is that right there? Let me see that again. Who, who, who was that? Come back to me again. Because I want to pray for you. Who is that? <clears throat> Let me see your name. Who's the person? That's you, Robin. Okay. Robin. Robin, go get some water right now. Get a, get a glass of water. Go get a glass of water right now. Go get a glass of water. Go get a glass of water. Let me know where you have that. Go get, go get some water right now. Watch this. Y'all want to see something? Watch this. Watch this. Let me know where you have that water. Let me know. Y'all watch me. Y'all watch this, okay? Now, I'm not with her, but watch what happens. Let me know when you have that water. I'm going to show you something. <clears throat> Let me know when you have that water. I got you. Yep. I, I, I see it, Nina. You got it? Okay, I want you to speak over that water. Speak. Say what I say. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this water is representation of what Holy Spirit hovered over in Genesis chapter 1. Father, in the name of Jesus, this water represents what Jesus went under when he was baptized. Listen to this. Father, repeat after me now. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, this water represents what came out of the side of Jesus. As I take this water and I anoint it by the name of Jesus, my body will respond instantaneously on contact. Say this, Father, any door I opened, that allowed this to happen, forgive me. I repent for opening any door. And now as I drink this water by faith, I am healed from pain in my body instantaneously in the name of Jesus. Robin, <clears throat> drink that water. And when you drink that water, I want you to say three times, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Report back to me. Praise God. I, 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 I'm telling you, <clears throat> the fire of God, the, in the name of Jesus, we send the word.
Talk to me. Robin, let me know. Tell me that pain, that discomfort has the is, is gone. Talk to me. Talk to me. Robin party, she party, she party, she, she party. You know what? She tell, she she speaking in tongues right now. Robin, I I can see it. She in the spirit. She speaking in tongues. She laid out. She laid out. No, she's already healed. She's laid out. Robin laid out. I see it. She crying. She it's it's gone. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Y'all see that? You see that? Robin said it's gone. Come on, Robin. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Put it up there again, Robin. Say it again. Write it again, Robin. Write it again. Write it again. Write it again. Write it again. Let God be true. And every man be a liar. The word of God comes with power and demonstration. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Robin, I even pray, I even pray for a regulation in your sugar level. I pray for a regulation in your sugar level. Now, Robin, you're going to have to start eating right and start walking. Start doing some, some level of exercise. Okay? Now, you're going to have to guard yourself. Okay? But I also pray. And I'm also praying um, for that sleep issue that you have. You've been going through it for a month. Well, you got on this Bible study and you got healed by Jesus' name. Praise God. Robin, also... Um, that sleep issue that you've been dealing with, the Lord says that moving forward, you're going to sleep like a baby. But there's some things that he's been talking to you about, and you have not been fully doing it as you should. And so uh, the angel of demolition, that's what I call him, the angel of demolition went and destroyed that altar. And uh, Lord Jesus, yes. See, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. See, I'm, try I'm trying to tell you guys. See, this is the anointing. The angel of demolition has gone in and demolition that but don't 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 reconstruction it but don't reconstruct it rather by doing what you should not do robin okay and you need to come into the building i know you're tuning in but come on to the building come get this thing in person praise god holy spirit <clears throat> we give you praise we thank you for what you're doing you're giving us a true a true revelation of uh of the power of the kingdom that Jesus rules over. <clears throat> we thank you that the Father speaks to Jesus. Jesus speaks to you. And you speak to the angels that minister. Now, every angel pertaining to us, I commission you to go and do the work of the Lord. Whatever we need for the mission, whatever we need for the assignment, go forth in Jesus' name. And do your work. Hallelujah. Isn't, isn't the Lord amazing? Isn't he just absolutely amazing? I mean, isn't he just, uh, the, isn't the Lord amazing? You see? But let me tell you something. Every time the word of God is spoken with pre precision, precision, he brings power and demonstration. You follow me? And that's why I keep telling you, it's not... <laughs> Come on, listen. Come on and get this thing. It's not, listen, it's not, it's not by might nor by power. It's by the spirit. I'm not there. I don't have to be there. The spirit is there. It's the spirit of God. But see, the reason why she got healed was, is because she's in the spirit. She received this word. 
You, you see what I'm saying? And when she received this word, she got her healing. Nothing can stop you from getting what you need or what you desire once you're in the spirit. Satan can't mess with you in the spirit. He lost the spiritual fight. He lost that fight. He lost that fight, man. He can't win in the spirit. He lost that thing. The only way he can get you is in the flesh. He can't get you in the spirit. He cannot get you. Satan cannot, even though he's a spirit, Satan has never won a fight in the spirit. Any fight that he won, he won it in the soul, in the body. He never won a spiritual fight. Satan has never won a spiritual fight. Any fight that he won, he won it in the soul, in the body. He never won a spiritual fight. He can't do it. He can't do it. He don't know how to win in the spirit. Holy Spirit, I gave you wisdom. I gave you a revelation. We thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't, I don't even know what to do. I just, just, we just thank you. I mean, what, 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 can, what can we say? What can we say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for healing your daughter, my sister, our sister. Thank you. Thank you for honoring your word to perform it to perfection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to give us the truth and then demonstrate your reality to us. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. If you're not a partner with this ministry and you want to partner with us, go to the website, fftkgm.org. Uh, forward slash join fftkgm.org forward slash join you can join the ministry that way Sunday I'm going to go deeper we're going to stay in deliverance forever we're not moving from here moving forward we're doing straight deliverance I mean we're just going to do this we're going to do this till Jesus come back we're not we're not changing we are we are full throttle deliverance that's it right there Thank you. Moving forward, we are full throttle deliverance. We're not moving from deliverance. We're staying right here forever. Forever. Because when you get free, you're going to see what you need. You're going to see it. And you're, going to, you're going to see everything that God has for you. So we're going to see you on Sunday um, for, for, for Bible, um, for service. And then we're going to have our luncheon after that. I know you guys feel amazing. Raise your hands for the blessing. But well, before we go, hold on. I'm sorry. Let's give Holy Spirit hearts. Let's let's flood the screen with hearts for hope. Everybody, everybody here. Everybody, let's let's flood the screen. Come on, let's flood the screen with hearts for Holy Spirit. I want everybody just to just to just give us hearts for Holy Spirit. Just just hearts, hearts, hearts. Thank you. God bless you, Helen. I love you, girl. Come on, come on. Y'all just go on. Come on. Y'all just flood the screen with hearts. Y'all flood the screen with hearts. Praise God. Thank you. Raise your hands. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm. Raise your hands for the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his peace. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed rest of your week. We'll see you on Sunday for an awesome service. God bless you guys. Good night.